Montana State University welcomes you to this short video series on anaerobic digestion for small and mid-sized farms. We are convinced that anaerobic digestion is an excellent strategy to convert farm waste into biogas and biofertilizer. This work has been supported by the National Institute of Food and Agriculture through their Western Agriculture Research and Education Program. Anaerobic digestion is a critical technology. It's so stupid simple. That's what makes it great, is there's not really any moving parts. You can add a moving part if you want to stir, which just helps create more output and better yields, um, but you really don't need anything. It is essentially a cow's stomach that is just doing what stomachs do, digest things. And the output of that is something that we could definitely use. You get three outputs. You get methane, you get the digest state, and you get the sludge. And all of those are usable. Your feed comes in here, and then it goes down. I'll open this up in a moment and show you. But the feed goes down, and it goes down into a big stomach that is uh, about four feet down into the ground. And it, it gets out, again, about 12 feet in diameter. It was pretty big. And then the material gets in there, and the bacteria, they chew up that material over time and then the methane bubbles up to the top, which is collected inside the neck, which is here what you're seeing coming out of the ground. And that methane, as it fills up the first holding tank, actually then goes to the other two, so we have three times the amount of methane storage. Um, as far as the outlet goes, that's on the other side with the other green um, panel over there. That's where the digestate comes out, where you can collect it. Here you can actually see the methane collection dome. I think that's about like one cubic meter maybe. This would have water in it to a certain point. It would actually be a little bit below uh, this line. And as the methane comes up, it displaces the water inside of that cap and the water comes out and sits on top of it. And this creates pressure. Just having that water on top was enough to move everything into the different things that you could use the methane gas for, such as a heater or a, uh, in our case, a biogas generator was the primary use that we wanted for it. The analytical data also allow the collection manure into a process that uh, under control. In, in the analytical data process, the microbes convert the nutrients from the organic form in the manure into a inorganic form. The reason that I found out about anaerobic digestion is that I've been looking at ways to have more sustainable food growing systems. And in order to be sustainable, you have to look at energy. You have to look at heating costs, you have to look at cooling costs, and I want to be able to be independent and not be dependent on other systems. Let's not forget the, um, the logistics aspect. Yeah, if I, uh, for example, if there is an organic farm and they need to get manure from another farm that takes time, that, that, that has a cost, here everything can be produced on farm, so there, there's no, no need for, sh for shipping or energy or fertilizers around. It can be produced on the farm. And uh, then the third aspect is, um, I think that this is a E relatively easy to operate uh, technology once it is installed and once we know how it works it should not be complex I mean it for, an, for an, a good experienced farmer uh, it should not be a big deal to, to operate a biodigester and to make use of the uh, of the of the products as as they are used to similar technologies anyways. I do think anaerobic digestion and similar technologies can contribute to sustainable waste management and residue management horticultural systems here in the northwestern United States. Um, I know that a lot of the, the research and a lot of the practice of this technology is in places like Europe and Asia and starting to become more common here in the United States, but I think it has a lot of promise here in the northwestern part. Anaerobic digestion can contribute to multiple dimensions of sustainability for the food system, including environmental dimensions and economic dimensions. It really helps create a closed loop system on farm, with farm residues being redirected instead of going to the landfill, um, actually being utilized for nutrients and energy on farm. At the core of agricultural sustainability is uh, soil health and uh, nutrient management and anaerobic digestion is a way to basically tie the idea of uh, processing by products and use them
to improve uh, soil health and uh, sustainability. From the climate perspective, is the conversion of the uh, carbon into methane that can be collected and then use a renewable energy instead of emitting to the air directly. This will significantly reduce the climate impact. What you load into the digester obviously depends a lot. Uh, affects a lot what, what you get out of it, yeah? both in terms of gas, uh, uh, but especially in terms of the, of the uh, nutrient content of the fertilizer. So uh, the most common use of this technology of the large scale digesters, which have like this, look like silos, huge, huge things, uh, they, uh, their core feedstock is uh, manure, uh, it's, it's on, on, on dairy farms where they are most common, and then you get a relatively high uh, an, an effluent, so a biofertilizer is very high in nitrogen, especially phosphorus. The ideal um, farm for anaerobic digestion, and so the anaerobic digestion require basically um, stable supply of manure with uh, relatively stable characteristics. Right? So uh, the quantity of manure and the quality of the manure, the consistency uh, are the main factor. In addition to the manure generated on the farm, you should also have the capability to import other residues, other organic matters, so that we can capitalize the uh, uh, economy of scale. Since we are dealing with a uh, gas and and uh, they can they can always be the the, the risk if the gas gets exposed to uh, inflammable material or is, uh, to fire itself it's it's always a risk but I have to mention that's the risk with any gas yeah whether whether you you get like your propane gas on on your farm or you have your own uh, biogas at the end of the same it's always the, it's it's always an existing risk. There is a large upfront cost. There's a barrier to entry uh, for this technology, and there has been a lot of research that shows that the upfront cost is a barrier to entry for the adoption of this technology. I think also knowledge, technical skills are another barrier, as well as a need for incentives for farmers to adopt this practice. Smaller scale operations have practiced AD technology before successfully. One of the challenges would likely be the cold temperatures in those winter months that we have here in Montana. It would probably be um, um, nice if our state government chose to invest in this kind of technology. If it's, if it's something that has a high upfront cost, then perhaps there are ways that we can um, invest like through the growth through agriculture program for example this is this is one way that the that the state helps invest in in new innovations that might be costly up front but that will be beneficial in the long run so st programs through our uh, state department of agriculture i think would could be very beneficial Yeah, so I think education is really, really important and building capacity of farmers. There is, you know, a need for, I think, technical support, which is really important for producers who are implementing this technology. Yeah, I think there's really the potential for multi-pronged incentives for farmers to adopt this technology in the form of subsidies, in the form of some sort of tax incentive or tax reimbursement. It's important that we support research and inquiry into this kind of technology, testing its e effectiveness and e efficiency and its value, um, doing the outreach piece, right, with, with producers but also with consumers, and um, preparing students to be active in this field.